He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should be saved. He said all come to repentance. Do you get that? A lot of people think they're going to be saved that hadn't come to repentance. You don't get saved. Listen, the, the door to salvation is repentance. You understand? That's the first word of the gospel is repentance. When Jesus came preaching, what did he preach? Repent. When John came preaching, what did he... Re- first word out of his mouth? Repent. Do you get that? So there must first be repentance before there can be salvation. He didn't say he wants all men to be saved. Does he want all men to be saved? Of course. But the way to be saved is to repent. It, you have to repent. You understand? Jesus came to save us from our sins, not in our sins. He didn't come to leave you as you were. So we can see here, okay, that there are some things that are God's will for every person. So let's, let's run through them real quick. First off, we know that it's God's will that everyone should repent and be saved. Do you agree with that? Okay. We, just as a by the way, have you ever noticed in a court of law, if a person is asked a question, they can't just nod their head. I'm, I'm talking about on the witness stand. Do you get that? They can't just nod their head. They Why? Because there's a stenographer there writing everything down. And so there has to be an answer. So they, if they just go, then they're going to say, excuse me, can you state that? Can, can, you, can you say that? Say this. And so they will have to say it. Why? Because they have to verbalize what they're saying before it can be entered into record. Do you get that? Okay. Your faith is motion activated. Your, your faith is verbally activated. You must give an answer. You can't just go, hmm. No, you have to agree. You have to agree with what the Word of God says. And you have to agree vocally, verbally, to make it yours. Why take ye thought? Saying. So you don't take a thought until you say it. Are you with me? So whenever the Word of God is spoken and you agree with it, you must verbally agree with it to make it yours. Just See, if you just sit there and go, hmm, yeah, that's good. You know, I, yeah, I agree with that. And, and you just think that, then all you're doing is mentally assenting. You, you're agreeing, but you have not committed. It's not yours. You've not taken that as yours, right? That's a way to respond. Now, first off, okay, we know that it is God's will that everyone should repent and be saved. Next, we know that it is God's will that everyone receive the gift of the Holy Ghost as in Acts. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Verbally activated, okay, now... We know that it is God's will that everyone be sanctified, set apart for holiness, and not commit fornication, but know how to keep their body under control. Do you agree with that? All right. We know that it is God's will that everyone should be healed and healthy, even as their soul prospers. Do you agree? All right. There you go. Now you get it. So what else is God's will? Okay, let's take it a step further here. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. This is the real heart of the message. Now, we're going to tile this together because this this is the main thing that I felt the Lord wanted me to get to you today. Everything else was added to it, you might say, in the sense of uh, it's, it's vital and necessary that you know it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now, according to the Greek, there's only four here. It's apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors who also teach. It's really fourfold, not a fivefold ministry, technically. But don't worry about that. So we know that God desires and calls some people to be in the ministry. Fourfold, fivefold, however you want to say it. Can we agree with that? Okay. Now, why? Well, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So now we know that God's will is that we complete... Now, that word where he says for the perfecting of the saints, that word literally means that we be completely furnished. In other words, we're lacking nothing to do. We have everything we need to do the will of God. That's what it means. So the fivefold ministry, as people call it, is for the perfecting of the saints, to completely furnish and provide for the saints to be able to do God's will. Do you get that? Okay? It's not the fivefold ministry's job to do all of the stuff. It's the ministry's job to train people to do the stuff. 
Do you get that? Okay, now, so we know that it's God's will, that God's will is that we be completely furnished, perfected for the work of the ministry. We know that God wants believers to grow up and be trained so the body can be built up. That's what that word edified means. Now, how long are we going to have this ministry? Verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So, number one, unity of the faith. Number two, knowledge of the Son of God. Number three, unto a perfect man. Number four, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So here's what we know from this verse. We know God's will is that we all come in the unity of the faith. Is that right? That we all be believing the same thing. Number two, we know God's will is that we are all to have the knowledge of the Son of God. How do we do that? We have His mind. We have the mind of Christ. uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. We have the mind of Christ. So we are to have the knowledge of God, His wisdom, His understanding. Number three, we know God's will is that every believer is to grow up into a complete, mature Son of God. We just saw that from that verse. Which is to the full degree of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. So until we all look like Jesus, he's not done. Does that make sense? He's still working on us. Now, why does that, what does that tell us? Well, as he is, so are we in this world. So we are to grow up to be like him. So God's number, now understand, God wants you saved, he wants you healed, he wants you delivered. Why? So you can be saved, healed, and delivered? No. So that you can grow up to be conformed to the image of Christ, so that you can grow up to be in the fullness of his son, just like his son, an identical clone of his son. Do you get that? Walking in the same thing and, according to the words of Jesus, even doing more than he did. Do you get that? Now, he lived from, well, up till 30 before he ever went in the ministry. Then in three years, three, three and a half, almost four years, he did so much that John said, if all the things he did was written, I don't suppose the whole world could hold the books. So now, there, there's only 17 healings in different means uh, mentioned in the book of Matthew. There's only five in the book of John, right? And then there's 23, I think, in Mark and 24 in, in Luke, something like that, of individ, not just individual healings, but mentions of healing. Sometimes it says multitudes were healed. So these are just individual mentionings. All right? But now notice this. If he did that in three years, because you remember when, when the Holy Spirit came upon him, he was empowered for service at the baptism in the River Jordan. So for three years, in those three years, he did more, so much the world couldn't hold the books. How long have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? How long have you been saved? Let's put it that way. Watch, now understand, it is not normal for a son of God to live the same way he did before he was a son of God. There has to be something different about sons and daughters of God that lets people know that they are different and that they have something that they need. Amen? That something is, of course, a new birth. That something is the Holy Spirit. It is the fact that his, God's presence, his power, his grace, his mercy, his word, all of that abides in us, and we are to grow up to be like him no matter where we are, no matter where we go, no matter how. Listen, the, the newest Christian can heal the sick. Amen. Newest Christian. I mean, little girl, 12 years old, been saved five minutes and was healing the sick. But, I mean, this is a, a true story. It's happened uh, actually in South America with one of our pastors down there. And so he got her saved and then had her praying for sick and they were getting healed. Five minutes, 12 years old. We got no excuse. I I mentioned earlier about the transportation and the technology. Look at what all we've got. Every one of you can touch the world through the internet, through just getting on and and instead of doing Facebook and TikTok and all that other stupid stuff, you could actually do some good and start reaching people. And sending out prayers and telling people, you know, write me, whatever you, however you want to tell them. But they, you can minister to people and it will work around the world. You don't even have to face them. Maybe you don't like in front of people. Fine. Hide behind a computer. Just do the work. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I'm, not, I'm not putting that down. Whatever it takes, let's get to them. 